Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your original YouTube shop teacher, and yes, yet another rust removal video. I have 14 of them, as you can see in the playlist, but I'm sitting here next to about 18 rusty tools that were given to me last year in the mother load video. Take a look at that. And I haven't done anything with them, but all are quite rusty. None have any value at all, so after I do de-rust them, they'll go to Habitat for Humanity because these are all duplicates anyway, but maybe some of them are a little better than I thought after we clean them up, but I'll be using electrolysis as I have in other videos. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you try this at home. It's real easy to do. You can do it in the kitchen if you need to, of your apartment. These rusty tools were acquired in this video, Mr. Pete hits the mother load. Make sure you watch that. I'll put a link in the description. I think you can see here that there's really nothing worth saving. There's one of those Eiffel pliers and an S-wing hatchet all taped up in a vice grip. So there is some quality stuff here, but it's just old and rusty. Look at that socket. You think that'll clean up? You don't need much in order to do this process. A battery charger, some Arm & Hammer washing soda, which is actually sodium carbonate, and a steel from your wife, a Rubbermaid container, and I'm going to do that all right now, and then the tools will be, will be suspended by wire, and the current pass through them, and the rust will be transferred to So there's the old saw blades. They have a lot of surface area. That's why I am using them. This one's a Diston. It pays to use the best. I will swear that my neighbors watch me with binoculars until I start making a video and immediately come out with their huge lawnmowers to mow a two acre yard. All right, I've added about 15 gallons of water to the Rubbermaid and I already have probably a two cups of this dissolved. I may have to add more water depending on how long those tools are and the tools will be suspended from very limber picture wire rather than baling wire. Okay, using this kind of wire I will be suspending all of the tools from these steel bars. These have to be conductors as well. Just hanging them uh, like that and I'll wrap the wire around this. Well, all the tools are hanging by wires. Nice stringer of fish, isn't it? I will have to add a little more fluid. Boy, that's a heavy one. Now I will use a jumper cable to jump between these two pieces. Need a good connection. And the saw blades are right here, three of them. And I've got them blocked out a little bit from the container so that there can be circulation clear around. And now they have to be connected in a daisy chain fashion. Now this jumper starts here goes around to this saw blade and then I have to connect these two. As well. The battery charger is not plugged in yet but I'm going to put the red right here and the black could be you know, anywhere here. Right there. Uh, again I need to add more water. I'm just about ready to go here. The battery charger is not plugged in yet, but I have the positive on one of the saw blades, and again, they are daisy chained together, and the positive is the anode, sacrificial, and then the negative is clipped onto these steel bars, who are daisy chained together. Now let's plug it in. The battery charger is set at 6 amps and 12 volts. Do not use an automatic. 
Now watch the needle as I plug it in. And it's working. Now some of those tools are too long, they probably should be hanging in there horizontally, but I'm going to add just a little bit more water. Can you see that the bubbling has started? So it is working and I'm going to come back in a couple hours and show you what it looks like at that point. But I want to leave it in here overnight, maybe two nights. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what it looks like. That might be an awful lot of tools and metal and rust that I'm trying to remove with that little charger. But then again, it may not. I really do not know. It's only 30 minutes later and look at how much action there has been already. Now when you set this up, make sure that none of the tools touch, in this case, the saw blades or you have a direct short and that won't work at all. And in review, the tools themselves are the cathode, the saw blades, the sacrificial steel or whatever you use are the anodes and the liquid is the electrolytes. I'll be back in a few hours. A word of caution. The gas coming off of this is hydrogen gas and I suppose can be dangerous. Some say that it isn't. Some say yes, very dangerous. But I'm in a garage here with big garage doors open so there's plenty of circulation of air in here. But you could get a spark if you connect or disconnect the leads while the battery charger is on. Well it's been exactly 24 hours and the bubbling has stopped pretty much and if we look over here at the meter the settings are the same but it's only about 2 amps so here's what I want to do. I want to leave it in for another 24 hours but what I'm going to do now is with these two long tools. I'm going to reverse them 180 degrees. Also I'm going to take out the saw blades and reverse them because probably most of the deposit is on one side so I just want to flip them around. Let's see what this one looks like. And now this one. Not too much difference really. And now the third one. And now I will reverse <coughs> the two longest tools like that and that. And I'll let that hang down a little further. And connect it back up. It's back on 6 amps and I'll see you in 24 hours. And now watch as I turn the current back on. It went back up to 6 amps. Well it's been 48 hours and it's back down to a little less than 2 amps. I do not see much bubbling. I do not believe any more rust will get removed. And by the way, you can't leave it on too long. It doesn't really hurt anything. Just a waste of time. So now I'm going to take the tools out of there see what they look like.
Okay, here's the tools as they were taken out of the electrolyte. So they look terrible. Actually, they look worse now than when, when I started. So what I will do is take wife's vegetable brush and in that green bucket of clean water, semi-clean water, I will scrub them with this and then they need to be oiled right away before flash, uh, <coughs> flash rust. Well, I'm a little disappointed here. I've been working for a half hour and I got this many tools cleaned up, but to be honest with you, I used the wire brush on some of them. So I might as well have used a wire brush from day one. But what I've noticed with tool steel, it turns them a very black color, which I do not particularly like. Here's an old Pexel. I used to collect those back when I was in my natural prime. But that's all freed up. It's been oiled. It is usable. Maybe something I could keep on the tractor, but not a nice tool at all. That one wasn't too, that cleaned up all right. Here's an awl. Doesn't look good. None of these look good, do they? Even this tool, remember that was rusty on the back side? I stopped the rust, but it doesn't look good, does it? That Eiffel pliers turned out kind of nice. There's a fake channel lock, and so most of these tools can be passed on to a thrift store. What I don't intend to do anything with these. I'm sick of cleaning. Notice that we get flash rust quite a, almost right away. But this would be a good sort of source of tool steel, even though it's a proto, to anneal if a fellow wanted to make something out of tool steel. Because a piece of tool steel this long would be uh, 30 or 40 bucks with shipping, I suppose. But there's somebody that will like these old tools. I just don't want to mess with them anymore. Let's take a look at the rust that I removed. I know this is still wet, but let me scrape it off here. Made right, anyone? Made right? Well, that concludes the video on rust removal by electrolysis. Leave a comment. So long for now. This is Mr. Pete.